Hi, I'm Debbie with Nixine Publishing, and I am here with Adrian Nixon, who is actually across the pond in Yorkshire, England. I'm coming to you from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Hi, Adrian, how are you doing? I'm great, Debbie. It's getting dark here, so you'll probably see the, um, the light through the windows going darker. What but... our topic is today is uh, single crystal graphene. It's something that we've spoken of in a variety of our videos, but we haven't really gone a little bit deeper into that topic. So I wonder if you would share something um, with us. Yeah, I've got far too many slides for the uh, short video, but we'll try and flash through them quickly. So graphene, we quite liked the title, didn't we? Impossible to industrial in 16 years. And there's a very good reason why we chose those words carefully, because when graphene was first discovered, everybody focuses on, oh yeah, it was made by Sticky Tape, they won the Nobel Prize. What actually happened was, Andre and Costia did something that people thought was completely impossible. Before 2004, graphene and other 2D materials were proved scientifically not to uh, be possible to exist. And they disproved that and overturned a lot of the physics. It was one of the main reasons they won the Nobel Prize and they've opened the door for this whole new landscape of uh, 2D materials. So it's actually a pretty impressive achievement, isn't it, Debbie? It, it's extraordinary, especially because of what's behind the door. Yeah, and in all the popularization of graphene, people focus on the sticky tape and they forget this impossible nature of what they were trying to do. But they did it. As a result of that, after the Nobel Prize was awarded, the hype came in, everybody piled in, investors came in, and they thought they were going to get this wonder material immediately. And then we got graphene powders came out and people went, oh, it's just a powder. And then they saw a, a graphene uh, film on copper foil. And Debbie, I think you, you've seen quite a lot of the activity around graphene powders and what happened in the early days, haven't you? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Because people thought, well, we'll just mix a little bit in here or then we'll mix a lot. And once they did that, then it was, it, it messed everything up. They didn't get the desired results that they were looking for and ended up discovering that less is more when it comes Don't to graphene. Yeah. Uh, and curious, the more graphene you add, the worse it gets. You'd expect it to get better and better and better the more you add, but actually you're quite right. It's a very good way of putting it, less is more. And so these powders are taking off and we'll, we've covered a lot of that in a few of our other videos. So we're not going to focus on the powders today. We're going to focus on this other area, which we don't talk about very often, which is single layer graphene and multi-layer graphene on metal foil. And look at where we are with the industrial manufacture of that. So we're dealing right at the edge of what is industrially possible at the minute, but we'll show you where we are. And we're speaking at November 2020. And the reason I'm telling you the date is because this whole field is moving so fast that uh, you need to know the date and time almost when we've uh, stated anything, because um, it, this could be out of date uh, this, in a few months time. What's happening? What's going on? And what could it mean? Well, there is one big killer application for single crystal graphene. This is graphene layers. If you can make graphene on a large scale and start separating it and layering it up, then you can make something called a space elevator, which is basically a railway line to the stars that goes straight up. Now, this might sound like science fiction, but at the turn of the century, NASA had their advanced uh, Institute for Advanced Concepts look at this and say, is it science fiction or is it not? And they came back and reported saying, no, this can be done with today's technology. Everything is doable with today's technology now, apart from one thing, which is the material you make the tether out of. And that's that piece of material that acts as the bridge between space and the surface of the Earth. NASA had identified carbon nanotubes as the candidate material, but the problem is nobody's really been able to make them long enough and the whole project has stalled. So carbon nanotubes, great idea, but now uh, the focus is moving on to graphene. The key materials technology for this is called single crystal graphene. Isn't it fascinating that NASA tabled it after that 2003 study, and the very next year, Kostya and, um, and Andre discovered graphene. Isn't that a fascinating observation, Debbie? Yes, quite right. Just when NASA were thinking, oh, this is never going to happen now because the materials aren't available, then the work was done, yes, you're, you're quite right, a year after the final report, um, opening up this whole field again. Um, so what's been going on? Just before we move into the industrial manufacture, let's get this idea of polycrystalline and single 
crystal sorted out. So you're all familiar with uh, graphene, one atom thick carbon layer, hexagonal carbons, a bit like chicken wire. Polycrystalline means that the graphene has grown at different points and uh, where these domains grow, they, they eventually bump into one another. And can you see where the red lines are, Debbie, where we don't quite get the six membered rings forming? We get seven, eight, 12, or all sorts and gaps in there as well. Yeah, and, and I remember you telling us that it was like, um, like snowflakes landing, trying to then connect up. Yes, and th that, that's how this polycrystalline forms on uh, the copper foil when they make, try to make sheet graphene. But what we're really after this is a space elevator is um, single crystal graphene, which is this perfect uh, pattern. And that's the ultimate material. And that's the one which is defect free. So this is uh, the aspiration. Where we are at the minute is over on the uh, left hand side, making polycrystalline graphene. The aspiration, and um, which will definitely be achievable, is a single crystal. So what does a single crystal look like? And what does it mean? Just to get this right in everybody's heads, we're not talking about a brittle thing like a diamond or um, a quartz crystal. This is actually, in physics terms, a crystal means a repeating pattern. So graphene, single crystal graphene, and one atom thick layer would look something rather like um, saran wrap or um, you know plastic film food wrap. The image there is isn't graphene; it's it's actually plastic film, but it would look a bit like that. That would be a one atom thin layer of material, and it would be uh, ideally defect free. So. Can you actually make single crystal graphene? Is it possible to actually make a large molecule of graphene at scale with no defects? What that actually means is macro scale. And when we mean big, we mean making a single molecule at the scale of centimeters, meters, kilometers, hundreds of kilometers long. And that sounds a bit of a stretch. However, it's been made. It's been made in a lab in China already, and this is curious, three years ago, and it's been made on copper foil. And what they did was they've annealed copper foil and then gradually organized those, as you pointed out earlier, Debbie, it's like snowflakes landing on a pavement and then the snowflakes themselves start expanding and bump into one another. And what the trick the Chinese did was they organized the snowflakes to all point in the same direction. So as they grew, they, they bumped into one another and seamlessly connected up together to form a single molecule across the whole sheet. And they made a single molecule of graphene, which was half a meter long, 500 mil by 50 millimeters wide, half a yard and two inches, two and a half inches wide. Interestingly, Oak Ridge National Laboratory has also made it. It shows that you can make single crystal graphene. So we can make these m big molecules on very, very big um, scales. So now the next question is, is it possible to make graphene at industrial speeds? Because we're going to, you know, we're requiring ultimately meters per second speeds, and that is fast. And it's only 16 years ago that graphene was first isolated, and people were looking at graphene down microscopes in the lab and making it very, very slow processes. And what we've been doing in the journal is keeping a track of the industrial manufacture of graphene at scale. And so what we're going to show you now are some industrial processes that are out there right now, and we'll describe them very briefly. These it's important to say these are not for space elevator tether. All these companies are making graphene for the electronics market. And that's an important distinction we want to make. I was just gonna say for the electronics, that's to make the flexible, like to make a flexible screen, something like that. Yeah, you name it. Um, you could make, uh, if they can crack the manufacture of this, you can make uh, flexible touch screens for your cell phones. So you can roll your cell phone up. Where we are at the minute, Europeans, uh, there's a company called Extron. Uh, this is a photograph of uh, the Extron Neutron machine in the uh, in the Geek, the Graphene Engineering Innovation Center. This is what's called a roll-to-roll -roll continuous process. So you start off with a reel of copper foil. It goes down through a vertical tube furnace. Graphene is grown on the surface of the copper, and then it's reeled up at the bottom. The speed hasn't been disclosed, but we know that it can, they've got the capacity to make 20,000 square meters of graphene per year. This is yeah. industrial scale stuff. The graphene they make here is polycrystalline, not single crystal. It's made on metal foil. And it's stuck on the metal foil, and they've still got to develop a separation process. But you can see this in industrial unit that makes graphene continuously already. Here's a company in the USA. They've developed a roll-to-roll -roll process similar to the one you've just seen for making graphene on copper foil. They've actually, we don't know what the speed is, but they've managed to get uh, start to do work separating the graphene from the copper. 
And these pictures here show something called PET. It's this plastic used in water bottles, uh, polyethylene terephthalate, and uh, it's clear plastic. And then they've got one layer of graphene put on, five layers of graphene put on, 10 layers. So there's not only can they make graphene, they can separate it out and start to layer it up. Uh, we know that they've got the capacity to make at least tens of metres, probably hundreds of metres scale. So this is going on in the States right now. In the Far East, in Korea, we've uh, found out about the industrial manufacture of graphene. There's a lot going on in this slide. Uh, it is a two-reel process, uh, reel-to-reel -reel process. The thing I want you to take away from this is that uh, point in the red circle. It's a high-speed process. They've already got the manufacturing speed up to a meter a minute. It is. It looks like if all of if all the ones that you showed us kind of got together and exchanged notes, they'd probably have all the pieces. And also the fact they've got up to a meter a minute already means you can get a lot faster. So yes. this idea about making meter, graphene at meter meters per second is not some kind of science fiction daydream. Um, it's happening at a meter per minute right now. Yeah. So it's industrial scale. Wow. Impossible to industrial in 16 years. You can see why we've chosen those words because before 2004, graphene was thought to be impossible to exist by itself. It, it exists, it's been separated. The Nobel Prize was won in 2010. That gave us the, the hype phase. Graphene got a bit of a bad name. And if you talk to people, you might still hear people who are out of date thinking it's still in the hype phase. It's not. Astonishing progress has been made. This is barreling along faster than anybody realizes. It's not space elevator tether quality yet. So for people in the space elevator industry, be patient, but things are advancing really fast. Sheet graphing can be made at industrial speeds and industrial scales. There's much further to go yet, but boy, is this whole field advancing faster than anybody realizes. Yeah, it, it is. And I've heard it said that it's when you talk about being patient and how quickly things are advancing, it can be inside of a year instead of a number of years. So Watch this space. This whole field's moving faster than anybody realizes. It'll enable things that people thought were science fiction. Things like the space elevator are probably coming to us and people are starting to take this seriously. And Debbie, you and I are already having conversations with serious people in serious places asking us, you know, is this real? And our answer is, yeah, watch what happens. Yeah, it's, it's not only real, there's actually a global race to get the you know, single crystal graphene off the copper substrate to be able to put it into large quantities on a roll-to-roll -roll basis. So, you know, whoever can put all those components together, that's, that's going to be a game changer. Adrian, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. And